Join me as we turn our hearts and mind to God as we listen to this beautiful meditative music. Question of the day. 
And to help answer that question, God needed to be and was reimagined. God, as divinely dishing out rewards and punishments as a supernatural intervening force, didn't work in light of the exile. The understanding of who God was needed to evolve. And that lesson from Jeremiah reflects that reimagining and evolution in the understanding of God. God did not evolve. Human understanding and the people of God needed to wrestle with and understand that the exile was not the result of God hating and punishing them, which is what they had imagined before. That would no longer do. And in light of the exile, they needed to understand that God was not done or distant or unfaithful or lashing out at them. The exile created, created a crisis of faith. Jeremiah helped by reforming and reestablishing faith in God, offering a new way to understand God and the relationship between God and God's people. The feasting on the word commentary puts it like this, quote, When the Babylonians raised the temple in Jerusalem and dragged King Zedekiah off in chains, it destroyed the twin symbols of God's covenantal fidelity. Of Judah faced a crisis. Not only have they lost power and prestige, freedom and security, they have also lost God, or at least the assurance of God's faithfulness, which may amount to the same thing. An unfaithful God is no better than no God, and probably a good bit worse. In love. As a consequence of the crisis, exile. Jeremiah lived up a promising new covenant, offering hope through a new understanding of God being so close that our hearts carry the word, the law, the essence of what God wants and what God is. With this new understanding, God is so close. Every single person from the culturally highest to the culturally lowest person, person, knows God. The high priests and the clergy in the temple no longer have an elite in. The scribes and the others who can read are not alone privileged with access to the law. And God's forgiveness is not doled out by special human mediators. All of human inequity is forgiven and sin is remembered no more. Well, listen again. Listen again to the text to hear God evolving in human perception to a very personal, present, accessible to all God. Jeremiah 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with the ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant they broke for I was their husband. This is the covenant that I will make with those, with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I'll put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their inequity and remember their sin no more. Law that is written on the human heart is the essence of Torah, which is law. That essence is the care and the desire for well-being, not just for self, but for creation and others. We discussed a couple of weeks ago how Jesus taught all of the Torah hangs upon the commandment to love. Love God. Love your neighbors. Religion ultimately, is about how we relate to creation, and most especially, how we relate to other humans. And in this Judeo-Christian tradition of ours, relationship is supposed to be all about love, all the time. Which is why we talk about that all the time, because it is all about love. And that love stuff is, it's on our hearts. It's written, 
That's the law boiled down and it's embossed on our soul. The essence of the law and the primary characteristic of God is love. In our hearts, in our soul, we have love, the very spark of God within. And we know this. Love sits within us, calling us to belief in love and to action in love. I'll put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. Jeremiah is letting us know we are not called to believe specific dogmatic doctrines and creeds. We are called to love and to do loving deeds. That's what Jesus let us know too, right? Jesus didn't run out pushing detailed certainties about God. Jesus' thing that he did was love and teach love over and over and over again. The very early church followed suit. They responded to the law written on every person's heart to love, to love by becoming preachers and teachers and doers of love. And that was good enough for the early church. It was good enough for Jesus and good enough for Jeremiah and the Israelites. And it should be good enough for us 